This, this video, video is not intended, intended for, for children. children. Hello everyone, our topic this week was requested by Ultimate Knight and Ninjammer726. We'll be going over the origin, abilities, and current purposes of the titular Monster Hunters from the Monster Hunter franchise. So, to understand Monster Hunters in the current world context, we need to do a little bit of world setup. Monster Hunter games take place in a world that is filled with numerous massive, powerful, and destructive creatures. Many are dangerous only if provoked. Many more prey on anything they can routinely kill and eat, up to and including the various intelligent races of the games, because they have the size and power to make a meal out of whatever is smaller and weaker than they are, civilized peoples included. A step above these creatures, you have the Elder Dragons, creatures of such power that their very presence can affect the natural ecosystem of a region, for good or ill. At least a few of these Elder Dragons are sapient beings, though whether all such Elder Dragons are that intelligent is unknown. The world is also technologically set in a sort of pseudo-medieval time period. We say pseudo because for the most part the civilizations of the world don't seem terribly advanced, but there are examples of strikingly complex and advanced weaponry and technology seen throughout the games. Steam-powered lance weapons, yield mounted cannons, more modern style rifles capable of holding dozens of rounds of ammunition and firing at high speeds, even swords and axes with movable parts that are capable of conducting some form of energy, as well as dirigibles, weird elevator things, and other technologies that wouldn't be considered medieval. Some of these things would normally be hand-waved in similar settings simply by saying, It's magic! But magic is largely non-existent in this reality. So all of these accomplishments are purely technological despite the lack of similar technological growth in other areas of life. But this lack of technological understanding wasn't always the case, and actually leads directly into the nature and purpose of the modern monster hunters. In centuries past, a mighty empire sprawled across most of the old world. For reference, the newest game, Monster Hunter World, takes place on a new and largely unexplored continent dubbed the New World, while the previous games were all set on the Old World, the continent from which most of the known sapient races originate. As far as we can tell, there have been no specific references to this old empire found in the New World, though new expansions may reveal such findings in the future. This civilization's name has been lost to time, and is today known only as the Ancient Civilization, a thriving, mighty people from centuries past. We know little about them, but for our purposes, the two most important things we know are, first, the ancients were incredibly technologically advanced, well beyond the levels of education and understanding possessed by modern-day peoples because aren't they always? In fact, in older games, ancient weapon types for your gear were often some of the most powerful available, many of which had a much higher tech appearance than the more common modern weapons. Second, in a similarly unsurprising twist, we know that this advanced technology played a part in the ancient civilization's downfall. Surprising no one, monsters are fairly common in the Monster Hunter-verse. What might be surprising to some is that in times long past, they were even more common dragons specifically. While the ancient civilization was very advanced and very powerful, they, like the modern people, understood the quality of materials that could be harvested from the various monsters roaming the world. And such was their power that they could even capture, slay, and harvest materials from elder dragons with relative ease. One tower that remains standing to this day was apparently made of dozens upon dozens of parts formed from one particular elder dragon species. The ancients also domesticated the monsters, using them as guards, soldiers, and the like. As you can imagine, this made relations with the more intelligent elder dragons tense. But the final straw came with what became known as the Forbidden Act. The ancients discovered how to use parts from dragons, wyverns, and the like to create new living creatures, most notably the Equal Dragon Weapon, a living, possibly cybernetic dragon golem thing. It was enormous, took around 30 slain dragons to make, and had all the power you'd expect considering that information. Additionally, its life was extended by killing and devouring things. It was a weapon of war, and one that was perfected in the war that was started thanks to the creation of things like it. The Elder Dragons finally had enough of the Ancients' continuous slaying of their kin for their own uses. I mean, who's gonna be okay with seeing a building made of your cousin? much less war golems made from your next-door neighbor, or even that guy you met on the subway once. Left unchecked, the ancients would eventually hunt the dragons and their kin to extinction. Thus began the Great Dragon War. 
Details on the war are scarce, but the end result was that the population for both the dragons and the ancients were devastated beyond recovery. Though obviously some of the people lived, the ancient society died out completely, along with most of their knowledge, and the dragons' numbers dwindled to a fraction of what they once were. Obviously more dragons have been born in the century since, but their numbers have never recovered. Which is where the monster hunters come in. During or shortly before the beginning of the Great Dragon War, the ancients created dragon hunters, super soldiers, men and women empowered using the ancients' understanding of biology, technology, and the power of the creatures at their disposal. Created to hunt dragons to feed the machine of industry the ancients had created, as well as defend them from said dragon's wrath once the war began. Some of these hunters, with all of their natural power, survived the downfall of the ancient civilization. The modern day monster hunters are the descendants of these superhumans. The game centers around the activities of the modern day Hunters Guild, which takes a studious and conservationist approach to hunting. They hunt for two purposes the protection of society and the studying of the world around them to better understand it. If a particular area of study can be accomplished with observation, wonderful. If a creature can be captured, studied, and returned to the wild unharmed, great. If a creature must be killed to glean understanding from its corpse, okay. But wildlife conservation is a major part of their decision making. They do not condone hunting species to extinction. In fact, Poaching is punishable by death under the right circumstances. In contrast to the ancients, the modern day Hunter's Guild walks in harmony with nature. If something is throwing off the local ecosystem, they investigate the issue and attempt to resolve it. If something is poisoning the water, they figure out how to fix it. If an invasive species has entered the region, they either chase it off or try to help it acclimate without destroying the delicate balance of nature. But if all else fails or a creature is a simple engine of destruction, they kill it to preserve the balance of life both in the wild and in their civilization. And the monster hunters, the player characters, make up the field agents for the Hunter's Guild. The superhuman nature of the ancient dragon hunters has bred true, and though it's presumed that the abilities of the ancient dragon hunters may have been more potent, modern monster hunters are nothing to sneeze at. They have superhuman strength and durability, this is why they can wield weapons twice their size with comparative ease, or drop seemingly infinite distances land on their feet, and keep chasing their quarry like nothing happened. Useful traits when battling creatures, universally a minimum, yes, a minimum, of twice your size, and nearly always covered in thick armored plates. Though they don't possess super speed, hunters can run and climb in pursuit or fleeing from monsters nearly forever, requiring only brief, like seriously a couple seconds long, stop to regain their breath and stamina before continuing on. They have the strength to lift blades twice as long as they are, swing hammers with heads bigger than their own torsos with enough force to crush the carapace of any creature they encounter. Added to all of this, monster hunters spend years training in the arts of combat as well as hunting, survival, and general creature physiology. So that no matter the environment, they know what to look for, how to survive, and how best to strike should they encounter a hostile monster. But they do so to protect those who can't, and cull the herd so that nature flourishes in harmony. And that's basically the story of the Monster Hunters, protagonists of the Monster Hunter series and super soldier wildlife conservationists. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave us a like and maybe share it with somebody who might like it. If you have ideas for videos you'd like to see us do in the future, do like Ultimate Night and Ninjammer726 and let us know in the comments down below. If you'd like to see more videos from us in the future, be they lore, let's play, or other, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. In the meantime, this has been... True, True Masters, Masters and Morons, Morons signing, signing off. off. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to see more like it, hit that subscribe orb. To see our last Let's Play, click or tap the link on the right. For our last lore video, click the link on the left. Thank you to all of our patrons for making these videos possible. Thanks, Thanks for watching, watching and, and we'll, we'll see, see you next time. time.